Late last summer, I began leaking information about what people should expect out of Zen 4 X3D. And the first and probably to this day most interesting thing that I leaked about Zen 4 X3D was a set of benchmarks that, at a minimum, I argued back then, pointed to Zen 4 X3D's uplift being at least comparable to the boost that we got from X3D technology with Zen 3. And it could be possibly better based on some of the results I was seeing. However, I was cautious back then, and I did intentionally say that I was cautious and everyone shouldn't take this as an average, because this was just one set of benchmarks on A0 silicon that was at low clock speeds for all test units, and, well, I'll admit it now, none of the benchmarks were gaming. However, it was worth pointing out, and I did point this out back then as well, that gaming should see an above average boost, so again up to 30%, but generally more like a 10 to 20% uplift. Again, comparable to Zen 3, that's what I said we should all expect out of Zen 4 X3D. And today at CES, AMD confirmed that is what we are most likely getting. And seeing this officially announced today and all of the other announcements that came out of AMD's CES keynote, I can't help but just say it, I think Intel is in for an insanely rough 2023. And in fact, I think saying that it will be a rough year for Intel is an understatement. I think this year, and possibly at least the first half of 2024, is going to be a complete bloodbath for the company. Especially when it comes to mobile products, it seems like AMD has just ended the Intel question for the foreseeable future. I mean, let's actually start, though, with desktop. X3D's performance boost that we're seeing, you know, it kind of looks like up to 30% depending on the games you see benchmark, but certainly somewhere around an average 15% increase. There is no way the i9-13900KS is going to do anything to the X3D products. Uh, maybe I actually think Intel will be able to keep a 5 to 10% multi-threading lead with the i9-13900KS, but that's going to come at the cost of using probably two to three times the energy of AMD's X3D models, and it's going to just lose gaming. And if you actually wanted multi-threading performance, the elephant in the room is that AMD can drop a Sienna-based budget Threadripper system with 32 uh, Zen 4 or Zen 4 X3D threads whenever they want around the second half of this year. And then in terms of workstation, they can just drop a 96 or 128 core product as well. And the entire HEDT and workstation argument with Intel will be gone. So the one thing that Intel could really argue multi-threading will be a moot point if AMD decides to make it one if AMD releases Threadripper products for both HEDT and workstation and just crushes them across the board. Because Genuinely, I don't think Intel has anything else on desktop. They're not going to have the gaming crown. They won't have the multi-threading crown if AMD decides to compete in Workstation and HEDT. And when it comes to literally anything else, including pricing across the entire lineup, it wasn't just X3D that was announced today. Although AMD only really alluded to it a little bit during the video presentation, they did put out a press release confirming the non-X versions of Zen 4. And these products are all priced, well, a lot cheaper than the X variants MSRPs are, while offering about the same performance, and they even come with a nice cooler. Not a cheap cooler, a nice cooler. And so I just don't see what Intel's going to be able to say on desktop this year at all. They're going to lose gaming. All their products are going to be overpriced. They're going to use significantly more energy. And if you want multi-threading, AMD can just raffle stomp with Threadripper. Um, and actually, on the note of pricing, I think a lot of people were surprised that AMD didn't announce the pricing for like the 7800X3D and 7950X3D. But when I look at how the non-X products are priced, and they did announce that, they're not just priced in line with the MSRPs that we haven't seen for months during the holiday season for Zen 4. They're actually kind of priced in line with the holiday pricing AMD still has in effect on their website for the Zen 4X non-X3D parts. What I'm getting at is... I think they knew where they wanted to price the non-X parts to be competitive with Intel, and they look competitive, but they're still not sure exactly what they want to do with the X and X3D parts. I could be wrong. 
Maybe AMD is going to charge an arm and a leg, like $900 for the 7950X3D. Based on what we're seeing from i9-13900KS pricing, maybe they're justified to do that. But I would suggest that the reason they haven't announced X3D pricing yet is because they're not sure how permanent they want to make the X parts just yet. That doesn't mean I'm sure they're going to do any permanent price drops, nor that even if they do, the pricing will be as low as we're seeing with holiday pricing. Like right now on AMD.com in the United States, the 7950X is $574. Maybe AMD will decide, well, we wanted that to feel special. We don't want it to seem like we were desperate. So we're going to make it $600 or 650 MSRP now from 700. It's not going to be the holiday pricing, but it is going to be cheaper than MSRP. That's kind of what I'm wondering if AMD is considering doing. And then, you know, slotting in the 7950X3D at like 750 instead of 800 or something. And like just rebooting their entire lineup. I'm not sure they'll do that, but when I see them not announcing the pricing yet, it's probably that they're still not sure. And one thing I will say is if they do reboot the entire lineup and they price the X parts and X3D parts in line with the official pricing that is aggressive that we've seen today with the non-X parts, I don't know what Intel can do to respond to this. I mean, they're losing it everything and we've already seen from intel's earnings that their margins are below amd and they're getting desperate and they're, they're they're not really able to drop the prices of raptor lake much more unless they're just willing to sell these parts at a loss and so i don't know it's looking very dire for intel right now amd is winning at everything they can afford to charge less than intel and if they do that intel's really put into a corner here on desktop but that's just desktop when it comes to laptop, the situation is even worse. And I do want to talk about laptop and the other announcements that came out of AMD today at CES. But first, an ad from a sponsor. I don't know about you guys, but over the holiday season, I tend to eat extra calories. And Jesse here is no different. She's probably about to go eat that bone right now now but you know jesse's a growing girl she needs as many calories as she can get and she's also a dog she doesn't really think about if any of those calories are healthy unlike probably most of you humans watching who are about to go back to work after the holiday season and want something easy to make that hopefully will help you get off some of that holiday weight if that's you consider getting Vite Ramen. Vite Ramen is a sponsor of this piece of content, and Vite Ramen is an American company that crafted a protein and nutrient-rich meal that takes minutes to make without sacrificing taste. You can use their classic packages that make it easy to add protein and ingredients of your choice, or the new Ramen Go packages that let you microwave something quickly if you really only do have a 15-minute lunch break. And you know, Vite Ramen has been an excellent sponsor of Moore's Law is Dead for over a year. They've been good to us. So if you're looking for something like this, be good to them. Click on the link in the description and use the special New Year's Eve holiday code Moore's Law to get 10% off any order and a free package of ramen additionally while supplies last. Go to the link in the description, use the offer code Moore's Law, and buy Vite Ramen today. All right, we talked about desktop. Now let's talk about laptop and let's start with Phoenix, which is of course a four nanometer product that will be competing with Intel's 10 nanometer products. And surprise, surprise, four nanometer beats 10 nanometer by a lot. AMD is going to offer 30 hour battery lives, a cutting edge AI engine from Xilinx, and they could beat Intel's at least Alder Lake gaming laptop products in CPU performance by 20% before we even talk about Vcash variants or Dragon Range. I I'm not going to spend that much time on Phoenix here. I expect Phoenix to absolutely humiliate mobile Raptor Lake, and it should, considering the technology gap we have here. And Intel has nothing until Meteor Lake, which is, as I've recently leaked, at least half a year away and possibly a year away. This is going to be really bad. Um, the only other thing I would say about Phoenix is I thought it was interesting. They didn't seem to dwell on the integrated graphics at all. Uh, I actually personally take this as a sign that AMD knows the CPU portion of it is their strong suit right now. And that, well, there's no point in them showing the integrated performance of Phoenix until right before launch where they're probably still hoping to improve RDNA 3 drivers a lot. The fact that they're not talking about Phoenix integrated graphics could be a bad thing, but if they knew it wasn't possible to get any better, 
They just rip off the Band-Aid, is my opinion. So I still think that some evidence there that AMD is putting a lot of work into proving RDNA 3 drivers. And just from some smaller conversations I've had with some people at AMD over the past week, yeah, it, it seems like a lot of work is going into optimizing games for the radical new RDNA 3 architecture. And a lot of people do expect them to claw back some performance. It's too early to say how much, and that's why AMD isn't talking about it yet with Phoenix. And speaking of not talking about things yet, AMD didn't show off a Vcash variant of Dragon Range today, which I guess the first thing I would say is, make no mistake, look at these things. It's the same chiplets as Desktop Zen 4. If AMD wants to launch a Vcash variant of Dragon Range and extend the lead it has over high-end Raptor Lake, if you even call Raptor Lake and laptop high-end anymore compared to what AMD's launching, they can. They can extend that lead further. But look at what the lead is right now. It's hilarious. It's comical. The lead AMD is going to have in high-end laptop performance with Dragon Range over Raptor Lake I'm sorry, guys. I, I think that there's a chance that AMD thinks that they don't need the Vcash variant yet. And frankly, they don't. They don't need it. Phoenix crushes them. Dragon Range crushes uh, the high-end laptop variants out of Intel. I probably would save the Vcash versions of Dragon Range if I ever thought I needed to launch them until the Raptor Lake refreshes on the horizon to steal thunder before Intel announces anything new and tries to take back any crowns. That's what I would do if I was AMD, and I kind of suspect that's what they're doing. But while I'm not really sure AMD even needs to launch Dragon Range X, I do think this market desperately needs Navi 33, which AMD finally showed off the day at CES. And I gotta say that, well, first of all, after seeing what happened with the initial RDNA 3 pre-release performance portrayals compared to what happened in reality, let's mostly just wait for reviews here before we're so sure if Navi 33 is good versus excellent or something. But at a minimum, I think Navi 33 will be an economical monster. Look, the 3060 that it's being compared to has a 35% larger die size. And even if you account for 8 nanometer, I don't know. It's, it's impressive if Navi 33 at same power beats it by 15% even. It'll be really impressive. Um, and otherwise, that's really all I have to say. The Navi 33 will be cost less to make than a 3060. In fact, it's probably going to cost less to make than NVIDIA's 4060 and 4050 products by a decent margin. And therefore, I think we could have a huge winner here in terms of price performance in laptop, which God, do we really need. Right now, as I covered in a recent video, NVIDIA is planning to launch the 4070 laptop with a 106 die and they're going to give you a 107 die for the 60 and a cut down 107 die for the 4050 which will be in those starting at $1,000 laptops. NVIDIA will have $1,000 laptops with 96-bit graphics cards and I think Navi 33 costs less to make than that 4050, and if they put that in a 1,000 or lower laptop, they're going to crush it in performance, and we really need them too. AMD, please be aggressive with Navi 33. You have a cheaper product that seems better than what NVIDIA has in that tier, and if you really went for it, I think you could take a lot of laptop market share, not just from Intel, which you continue to do at a breakneck pace, and it's going to be a terrible year for Intel's laptop market share, I think, this year. But you could also take some from NVIDIA, which, seeing how things are going on desktop right now, you should probably try to do. And all right, then, I talked about desktop, I talked about laptop. What else is there to say uh, from what AMD revealed at CES today? Um, I'm not going to talk about Epic that much, actually. That would be the next thing most people would bring up. Uh, I have nothing really to add about what I think about AMD versus Intel server data center performance versus that old, like, Xeon Epic Mega Leak I did and the recent updates I put in that Meteor Lake video as well. Outside of those two videos, nothing to add. Sapphire Rapids will occupy about the same niche Ice Lake X did, uh, but outside of the niches Intel was already accelerating in, and they were pretty specific niches, AMD is going to run away with performance and efficiency in data center, and I just see it only getting worse, especially if, again, what I talked about in a recent video, Intel fails to get to Intel 4 by the end of this year and Intel 3 by the middle of next year, which they might. If they fail to do that, 
I have nothing to add besides what I've already said. Intel is seriously <laughs> in trouble long term, and I will start to worry about the viability of this company. In fact, that is kind of what I want to close on today here. So, you know, I'm not physically at CES, but surprise, some of my contacts, some of my sources that I talk to are people that work in this industry and they're at CES. And I got to say that I've heard from multiple people today, multiple people who have spoken with people at the executive level of some OEM. So think, you know, HP, Dell, Acer, Lenovo. Uh, I won't say which ones, but I will say I heard from executives from two of those big companies. Uh, they sound really pessimistic about Intel moving forward. Uh, one person asked one of these executives, you know, what they thought about Intel laptops long term. And the guy basically said, who cares? It doesn't matter. Maybe Intel will be forced to make AMD CPUs in five years. That's how pessimistic people that I heard from today are, are sounding about Intel. And so, yeah, I don't know what else to say. This looks like a watershed year for AMD and a complete hurricane of a disaster for Intel. And I can't believe we're saying this, but it just seems like if Intel doesn't get their act together by the end of this year, I'm not sure we're going to really recognize them as the same company we used to think of them as just a few years from now. And that's going to just about do it for this video, except for one little thing here. I did want to add one small update about the 4070 Ti volume before it comes out basically hours after this video posts. Um, I don't really have much to say outside of what I already leaked in my previous video, but what I will say is it seems like if you want a 4070 Ti, your best bet is probably to go to a micro center and get there when the store opens. There are some MSRP models, but from what I'm seeing, guys, it's like 10, maybe 20% of the volume is MSRP. It's probably closer to 10%. And a lot of them seem to be at Micro Center. So, yeah, you will have a decent amount of day one supply. Probably, I don't know, 10 to 30% more than what the 4080 had, which isn't that much. And it's really only more of a day one supply because NVIDIA held the launch back. They didn't launch next to the 4080 16 gigabyte like they initially were planning to with this 8104 product that they're now calling the 4070 Ti. But yeah, I just want to add that little bit of update there. More volume than the 4080, especially at Micro Center. But yeah, I mean really a small amount of it is MSRP and you better be up early if you want that $800 4070 Ti, which I could almost see why some people would justify, but well, I think the product just sucks. So let's just leave it at that. And let's uh, leave the video at that. Uh, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead. Check half of you in recent statistics I've seen are not subscribed to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel. Please double check that you're subscribed. Ring the bell button so you don't miss upcoming updates. And if you have the extra money, support us on Patreon. You'll get uh, early ad-free access to Broken Silicon, the premium podcast die shrink that only patrons get. We've got Jared's Tech coming on the podcast soon to talk about all the announcements at CES. You can ask him questions if you're a patron. You can also talk to me about all of this content on the Discord if you're a patron as well, but otherwise, no matter what, thank you for watching. <laughs>